All right, the first few times that you and I walked the streets of this neighborhood together, I, I couldn't help but notice how in every single block someone would come and wave or say hi or ask you um, to make a poultice for, for uh, controlling their bronchial congestion. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to me to be like the unofficial mayor of these Village. And at first I was like, well, she works in a bar. She probably knows a few of the customers. Um, and, and yes, that's partially true. But then I just, I spent, the more I spend time with you, that I realize that there's so much more to it than that. Um, the majority of the people that you were talking to and saying hi to were the real, the local people, the community here, which you were such a strong part of. Uh, you'd forged these amazing relationships, long-lasting friendships. And it's apparent, apparent that you're truly a caring person and one who takes relationships very seriously. People take to you so easily, they just want to be around you, to get advice from you, just to talk about life and just witness your contagious smile and your, um, your passion for life. Um, and it's obvious by the turnout today that uh, there are so many special people here in your life. And I'm so incredibly fortunate to know you and to love you and to finally get to marry you. Uh, when we first started going out, oh, sorry, let me backtrack a little here. When I first asked you out at the end of one of your shifts at DPA, you told me that you were going to England for a few weeks. But, you know, I knew where to find you. And that meant I had to come back again a few weeks later and ask you out a second time. There's more stress involved and the possibility of rejection. I mean, who knows? And uh, a lot can happen in two weeks. Uh, you might have met someone while you were in England, or you could have come to your sentence, senses and realized I was just another creepy beer nerd. <laughs> no offense to Matthew Essel. <laughs> But you showed a lot of heart, and when I came back a few weeks later, you immediately asked me to go to Record Club with you. And uh, for those of you who don't know at Record Club, it's kind of a monthly meeting of um, creepy music nerds. <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, I didn't want to have my musical taste judge so quickly, so we, we compromised and went to, uh, went to the film forum and saw Gary Cooper's High Noon. And early afternoon, one, we had a plans later, each of us, so we knew it would be a quick date, just to get to know each other a little bit, and it went fantastic, and I highly suggest that kind of date. Schedule something later, so here's, you have a timetable where you have to leave. <laughs> Takes all the pressure off. <laughs> So uh, perhaps it was a little bit presumptuous after about two weeks for me to invite myself to go to Australia with you for your sister's wedding. <laughs> but I knew that we were right together and, and uh, risking my employment to go on this adventure with you around the world seemed like the most natural thing to do. Uh, it was an incredible two months. We spent every minute together. Uh, we really learned a lot about each other. It was fantastic. and just showed we really belonged together. Everything was just so comfortable and loving that early. And in the four and a half years of our relationship, I've learned just what a beautiful person you are on the outside as well as the inside. You care so deeply for the people around you and for the earth and for our future. And you've made me incredibly happy. I never felt such genuine love before in my life. And I'm so excited for every moment that's going to come in the future with us. And so, Sasha Jones, I love you dearly, and I vow to love you forever. Where's the ring? <laughs> Where are the rings? Right here. They're moving good, right? Okay. Is it almost done? <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> I'm not very good at talking in public. Mm. Microphones really make me scared. So this is a big deal for me. Um, I. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to do that. I know um, Alison gave me some advice. I'm just going to look around at you for a second. Beautiful. <laughs> you're all so beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> there are so many words that I want to 
play to you, but what I really wanted to do, and I didn't, was learn how to play the ukulele so I could sing you a song. <laughs> but instead, I'm just going to read the words to that song. If I were a flower growing wild and free, all I'd want is you to be my sweet honeybee. <laughs> and if I were a tree growing tall and green, all I'd want is you to shape me and be my leaves. If you were a river in the mountains tall, the rumble of your water would be my call. If you were the winter, I'd be the snow, just as long as you were with me when the cold winds blow. If you were a wink, I'd be a nod. If you were a seed, well, I'd be a pod. If you were the floor, I'd want to be the rug. And if you were a kiss, I know I'd be a hug. If you were the wood, I'd be the fire. If you were the love, I'd be the desire. If you were the castle, I'd be your moat. And if you were the ocean, I'd learn to float. All I want is you. Can I be your bride? Take me by the hand and stand by my side. All I want is you. Will you stay with me? Hold me in your arms and sway me like the sea. You really are my angel, my sweet, sweet, kind, beautiful angel. There, I just, I don't even have enough words to describe how beautiful you are and how lovely. So, um, a couple more lyrics <laughs> <laughs> from a, a favorite song by uh, New Order. Um, <laughs> I'll see if I can remember it without looking. You're the kind of person I, I always wants to be with. You're really cool, and you really always say the right things to me. Um, now I tell you something, for my heart beats for you deep inside. You'll never be a burden, and my love for you will never die. Will never die. Will never die. I love you so much, baby cake. <laughs>